Hello there people, this is Christian, welcome back to my computer and Autodesk Fusion. And today we're gonna do the workflow for the challenge I posted previously. To just get started, let's have a look at the challenge drawing. It looks like this. It's like triangular faced vase with a shell. The shell is optional of course. Uh, out to the end of 60, triangle top face is 90 degrees. If we count here, we can see we have one, two, three layers or levels. And what more there's the polygon in this case is a hexagon, it has six sides. So that's the base challenge. I have it here. So let's check the height. That's what I was asking for in the challenge. From here to here, and you should get a value of 86.7 millimeters. So after you've done the model, I added a step to the challenge that is make it parametric and go from the previous dimension to the new ones here. 100 millimeters, 60 degree angle, nine sides of polygon and four layers. So let's have a look if my model can update. Let's do 100, let's do 60, let's do four levels and do nine sides of a polygon and have a new model. Still one single solid body and nothing breaks. Let's do a measure. Do it from the top face here once again, all the way down to the bottom face down here, and we get the dimension by 235.7 millimeters. So that was the two things I asked for. But let's get to the modeling. That's what people want to see. So new design, go back for drawing just to look at the stuff we have. We have 60 millimeters. We have 90 degree top angle. We have three layers or levers. I think there's one, two, three. The second layer, the second half of this layer is basically like the mirror of a bottom. So we all know, okay, we need to do a mirror. We need to, some, need to do some type of pattern. What more do we have? Okay, yes, so we have six sided polygon in this case. So hexagons is six sides. We want to be able to change that too. So like four things we want to add in to start with. So let's add a parameter. Sil let's do this. The cylinder OD, the cylinder OD, that's a circumscribed cylinder, oh sorry, millimeters of course. The circumscribed cylinder's diameter, and that was 60 millimeters. We have a triangle angle, a strange word, and uh, let's switch over to degrees. And that was 90 degrees in the first step. We have a counter for the number of uh, layers. And uh, there's no units, that's gonna be free. I'm doing use of parameters for two reasons. Yes, I'm gonna keep on typing polygon. There's a number of size of polygon. I know I'll be reusing some of these, the six sides of the polygons to start with a hexagon. Uh, and it makes it easier to find them. They end up here under user parameters. Of course, we could put them further down in the model, but I want to be able to easily find them because we're going to do some fun thing with driven dimensions later. So hit OK. Start with a sketch. I'm going to break up the design into two sketch. You could make this with only one sketch with some more work, but I'm going to make it with two. I'm going to do this with construction geometry. So I'm going to hit on construction because I want to avoid uh, Pro profiles, they are quite flashy and annoying sometimes and I don't need the profiles for now. We could use the circular profile, we're going to do a slightly different, we'll do a cylinder shape. But anyway, circle, SC on the keyboard to start the circle command, we're going to do a cylinder OD. We're going to do some lines, what I'm sketching is one edge of the vertex. I'm going to make a line, it can go straight down, so you can see I got the horizontal vertical constraints, so I'm pleased with that, and then from here to here. D for dimension. This is one edge of a polygon, so I'm going to do like this over here. 360 divided by the number of sides of a polygon. Like that. And now is one thing I need. Depending if I change the number of sides of a polygon, I want to be able to know the length of this. This is like the base of a triangular face. I'm going to go dimension. Click on this line and click out here and it says over constraint sketch. Yes, create driven dimension. And I like to immediately when I create a driven dimension, if I want to use it inside this sketch, I don't need to do anything. I can use it directly. But if I want to use it outside of a sketch, I need to make it a favorite. And I like to name it so I can find it. So I open up my uh, parameters, open up the model down here and the sketch and I can find the driven dimension here. So that is 
triangle base and I'm gonna make it a favorite so it pops up here among the favorites so I can use it later what more do we need we need one more strange line it goes from the center point out to the edge of a circle D for dimension this it, uh, angle here is gonna be the first angle here divided by 4 you're gonna see later what I'm gonna use this line for so I think I've done all I need here I have a base for later and I have that so I'm gonna finish sketch so this is like this is gonna be the base edge let's look at my previous model so that line there over here let's go back one step uh, that is the same as this edge here that's what I have sketched so create sketch from the front view now I I can start project intersecting but I like to start sketching first once again construction geometry I want to avoid profiles they are just confusing for now I'm gonna make the triangle face but I'm looking for the size so I'm gonna sketch the base up down gonna make a line from the center point of a base up to here until fusion I want this to be perpendicular gonna add some dimension this here is gonna be our base so start tape and typing in our triangle base name this is our favorite parameter from the previous sketch so we can now use it here the top angle of here is gonna be our triangle angle like that and now we need to place this this is just to find the hive of things we're gonna do later so I need to find this line and this circle here where they intersect the sketch plane S on the keyboard, start typing intersect, and I can't spell like usually intersect. I want this here and this. I'm gonna hit OK. I'm gonna make a small line from here to here because I know the center line of this face. I want to go straight for here because I want to make the first layer symmetric around the previous sketch plane. So I'm gonna do midpoint between this and here. So we are starting to get somewhere. So we have it placed, but we don't know the angle. Oops, sorry, I'm going to turn it too much. Uh, but we know that either this point here needs to be vertical above here or that below there. So we can use the horizontal vertical constraint from here to here. And by that, let's open up a sketch. We have two fully defined sketches. I will use this profile here for some cutting later. And now I'm going to turn things back to normal lines. This line here this line here and I'm gonna do some more lines I'm gonna make a line from here normal line straight up so you can I get the perpendicular constant you can see that it is blue square down here popping up because I want to get the perpendicular here up to here I'm gonna add the perpendicular constraint here so I have a fully defined uh, shape here this is gonna be used as a cutting tool later I can make one more line I will simply do a line do it like this make sure I get the horizontal vertical constraint that's what I want I can click here to finish it midpoint of this line to the region point of the center point of a sketch and I'm gonna add a horizontal vertical from this point to here so looking for the front this line here now has the same length as a half layer so I'm gonna finish sketch now we start the solid modeling I'm gonna start with the pipe feature. Yes, I could extrude the circle I want to do that, but I'm gonna make a pipe, use this line. Tail fusion, this is gonna be our cylinder outer diameter. And then I'm gonna hit E for extrude. The profile is already selected here. Uh, I'm gonna make this symmetric. And what dimension? I can simply use our cylinder OD because that's pretty far enough so it gets a true cut I want to make this far enough you can use other sometimes you use like all and stuff like that but it can confuse fusion we start to do patterns I want to use a defined distance so we're going to do it like that and now I've now noticed I forgot one thing I need to go back and edit my previous sketch I forgot I need this high for a pattern later so I'm gonna double click here D for dimension and add a dimension to this line create driven once again and go up here I'm gonna use it later so I'm gonna up the upper sketch find our driven dimension and call it this is a half you call a layer let's call it layer half layer and make it the favorite hit ok to finish the sketch finish sketch 
So, sorry, I forgot about that. So now we have driven dimension for what the height of the shape here is without doing any math. Now comes the interesting part. We have a triangular face here and we made with it a small line previous. This is the center line for rotation for the next face. So we can simply do S, circular pattern. This is a bit of fun geometry. Bodies, no, no, no. We're going to do it of features, our cut feature and select our axis, the line in our sketch, and it does too many. I just want to do two. Make sure it's adjust because it cuts different faces. Hit OK. And you can see we are done two faces. S1 is again, let's find circular pattern. Circular pattern of features. Our first cut, the first circular pattern. Axis, we can simply select the center axis over here. And this is going to be the same amount as our polygon sides. Hit OK, and you can see we have now made our first, like I call, half layer. How do we make the second part? Simple mirror, S, mirror this thing, mirror what, bodies, yes please, mirror plane, the top plane here. And nicely enough, Fusion has now, or the Autodesk team has added the possibility to do a join here, so we get one single body. Open up our browser, still one single body. but. Now we want to pattern this, and you have done this previously, rectangular pattern, the problem is the combined feature will get lost if you change the number of bodies you want to combine. So there's a small trick you can use. Create, do a boundary fill, select the body and nothing else, click over to select cells, select the cell as one single cell because I selected one single body, and operation when you're going to change to join. Uh, don't ask me how this really fools fusion, but what it basically does, it makes a new body that's exactly the same shape we have and join is, joins, joins the body to the previous body, so we end up with one single body joined to itself. Slightly confusing, I know. Hit OK, we're still one single body. S on the keyboard, rectangular pattern. We're going to do a rectangular pattern of what? Of features. What feature? This feature. What axis? The center axis. Where are you? And this wants to do it upwards. I prefer, I want to do a shell command later and I don't want to mess up the face up here. So we're going to change it to spacing. We're going to change the distance to minus because I wanted to go downwards. The half layer multiplied by two, of course because it's half layer, need to multiply two, and the quantity, we're going to use our layer command, or layer parameter, and hit OK. And we have our body. S on the keyboard, let's follow our shell feature, select the top face, I suggest the one millimeter, hit OK. So let's once again check if we do a measure from the top face, from here, all the way to the bottom face, we get 86.7. Is our model still parametric? Can we change our parameters? We'll mess with more parameters now because you'll see all of them. Let's change our diameter to 100. Change our angle to 60. Change the number of layers to 4. Let's change the polygon size to 9. So the model is working. It's not breaking. It stays one single body. And just to be safe, we can do a measure once again from the top face we had here. here. Oh, sorry. I want the face. And let's go down and do the bottom face like that. And it's 235.7 once again. So, I hope you know some little tricks on what you can do. There's a geometric trick about twisting this triangle face from here up to here. There's a trick with boundary fill, how you can make a parametric version of a rectangular pattern. I hope rectangular pattern will get similar to the mirror feature. I got the join feature now, but we have to see later. So. This is how I do this model. I hope you learned something. Take care, see you around, and goodbye.